All right. Well, thank you very much for attending today's webinar. I'm assuming by this point you probably had a good chance to look at the risk warning on the screen. Let's move forward. So we're in October now, so we're in the, the last quarter of the year. Um, so that in itself can sometimes bring some changes to markets. Um, it was actually uh, just heading into the end of the quarter um, at the end of Q2 when we saw it start to see a bit of a sell-off in the markets. And um, you know, I saw a statistic uh, last week that someone published um, that uh, year-to-date we've seen the smallest maximum drawdown in the S&P 500 ever. So the sort of the biggest uh, peak to trough pullback, if you like, within the market, that's the smallest it's ever been this year. So we're at pretty unprecedented levels of, of low volatility. Um, so if the S&P 500, as an example, were to get back within its kind of normal statistical levels, there needs to be some sort of pullback in the markets um, in this third quarter, um, a larger one than we've seen so far this year. Uh, October is uh, obviously famous for its big crashes, so uh, let's, see what, uh, let's see what happens. Um, as far as specifically what's on the agenda this week, we've got non-farm payrolls, pretty low expectations, under 100,000, uh, that's versus 156,000 last month. Uh, we've got the start of US earnings season. Um, Trump's uh, infrastructure speech was planned for today. That might be delayed now, um, given the uh, the tragedy over in, in, in Las Vegas. Um, the uh, data-wise, manufacturing service PMI is pretty uh, feature a fair bit. Go some way to explain why the FTSE is higher today, because we had some decent PMIs out of China. Um, obviously, uh, what happened in Catalonia? Um, some pretty graphic images and video footage coming out over the weekend. Uh, not a great look for the Spanish state and obviously very sad for those people that uh, got caught up in that. Not a great example of democracy. Um, and I, you know, I've talked about this a little bit in my uh, report today, uh, but just sort of saying that um, yeah, I think had even the result just gone ahead as expected, either, even if it was a, a strong yes vote for, for the referendum, it wasn't legally binding, so there wasn't really any um, necessary fallout from it. So probably markets could have just bounced back, uh, but now it's a bit more of an ongoing issue, um, and uh, something that. Um, uh, Rajoy in Spain is going to have to deal with and make customers job at the end of it. <coughs> um, obviously I mentioned that uh, mass shooting in Las Vegas, I don't think it affects markets but uh, you never know, um, every little small thing can um, affect sentiment. Um, and then some big levels uh, to talk about, um, Euro dollar pulling back to 117, um, sterling pulling back to 133, um, Brent crude has already almost hit $60 and now has fallen back a fair bit from it, um, WTI now coming back close to 50 in fact, um, and this FTSE 100 um, crossed that 7300 barrier and it pretty sharply jumped up to 7400. So, uh, moving on to the charts. So, got the uh, the weekly chart for the Euro US dollar candlestick chart here. <clears throat> Just want to kind of start with the weekly to get us, get, give us a little sense as to where we're coming from in these uh, last couple of weeks. Because obviously the Euro has been dropping pretty sharply since it hit that 121 mark. Um, it's been heading to the downside. But what is the context here to me? Um, we're above the 50. RSI on the on the uh, the weekly chart. We're above the previous swing low on the weekly chart, um, and uh, we're above both the the 20 and the 50 day moving average. So still um, a rising market from my perspective, and uh, I'm expecting the market to find some sort of swing low um, for uh, the medium term and to to bounce back. They, you know that's just the interpretation based on the trend, but. Am I ready yet? Not quite, because the alignment on the daily chart here is looking still pretty bearish. We're making lower lows, lower highs, um, not really signs of a base yet, um, not really signs of putting in a low yet. Potentially that happens down at the 117 mark that I mentioned, or down into that previous low, which I had marked on the chart as a weekly swing low that you can see here at 
there's kind of a uh, horizontal resistance on the on the daily chart. So maybe that prevents it. We're getting down into pretty heavily oversold territory on the uh, the daily chart, but um, we bounced up from 30. We you know we didn't actually quite hit the 30 level yet, so there could be more to go. And uh, certainly far from being back above the 50 level, where it'd be like comfortable to to think that we're back into a an uptrend within the uh, the daily time frame. So, you know, for me, um, it looks like the market's pulling back into a sweet spot for buying, but it's just we haven't really had. Uh, that it doesn't look like this down trend is on, on the daily chart is ending just yet. Similar story um, from Sterling, except the Sterling looks, I would say, arguably a little bit stronger. Um, it's pulled back from this 50% pullback, uh, these previous peaks from, from 2016. But again, the weekly chart um, is in a bullish alignment. We're pulling back to the previous swing high at the moment, around the 133 mark that I'd mentioned. So this is a potential area that the market bounces back from. Um, you see the, the moves higher were quite dramatic. The last three weeks where we've dropped down, not been so convincing really. Um, and you can see we're pulling back to support on the RSI level here as well, in around that sort of 58 mark. <coughs> um, to me, where we are, where we currently sit, a potential turnaround point, but really, as long as we're above 128, call it, um, to me, it still looks like a rising market. Now, were we to get down to 128, it would obviously look a lot softer at that point, but still, you know, I'm expecting the market to, start to turn around and uh, resume a, a daily uptrend. So we've taken out last week's low, so we are making officially lower lows at this point. Um, so we're heading down into that previous 133. Uh, on the shorter term, we have this previous peak around 132.50, you could say. Um, so in this area, potentially, if this gives up, then I would imagine that uh, we're probably heading down towards the 50-day moving average, and these lows down here could um, um, could offer the next potential area of support, um, given that that was where there was a low on the 11th of uh, September. Um, again, we are heading down below the 50 on the RSI on a daily basis, so um, the fifth, you can see how the price is dropping down below the 50 RSA at this, just shortly after it's uh, fallen through the 20 day moving average and taken out that previous previous low there. So you can see the, um, what was just a pullback turning into something um, a little bit larger, a bit of a reversal of the, the daily trend taking place. So to my mind, my style of trading, not, um, you know, obviously if, you're, if you want to buy on a down tick, um, you know, the market's doing the right thing for you at the moment. If you're looking for some confirmation that it's about to pull back higher, um, if you're looking for a resumption of the, the daily trend, it's not, it's not quite happening just yet. Um, but I th 132.50 to 133, it potentially could. Next area of support, I'd potentially say at 131.50, because um, by that, by the point, of, by the time it gets down there, it's probably going to match up with the 50-day moving average quite well as well. Euro sterling. So we're, this is again the weekly chart, and uh, we had a, a large drop a few weeks ago, but um, we've really calmed down in the last two weeks, and uh, this week, potentially trying to put in a base here. You can see it's that 50% tracement level of the, um, of the rally uh, since April, and then if I go down to the daily chart, <coughs> you can see that we've pulled back, through, we have dropped through that 50 level, but this was the, uh, the weekly the previous weekly low, which we came up and down and tested pretty much on the on the nose, and that came just after a breakdown of a little rising trend line there. Um, so we broke down, hit that longer term support, and have broken back above this little trend line, uh, rising trend line, which could have denoted a bigger break lower, but it, it just didn't because of the the long, larger longer term support. So it looks like we could be in for a bit of a bounce here, uh, and that would make sense. But the the, the the, the alignment of the market still at the moment, to my mind on this daily chart, is still to the downside. So chance of a bigger pop, um, but I think still while we're below this 50 area, while the moving averages are sloping down like they are, um, I think there's only so far any bounce in the market can go. So probably you're still, um, you know, part of the least resistance, there's still overall to the downside, but we're just maybe uh, because of this longer term support looking at a little pop in the interim. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, if we were looking for an area to watch out for once that bounce has taken place, probably the, just the, the, uh, the, the round number, the 90 level, you can see has been a pivot in the past, and it's just a, a round number that um, will concentrate mine should we get a move back up there. Dolly Yen, again, week, on a weekly basis, um, very much in a range. Uh, so 108 is called the low, you could, cross, you could say three times. Uh, 114 called the high, a couple of times at least. Um, so once we get back up to that 114 level, that's when we, you know, we're maybe looking for the range to hold again. It can't hold forever, um, but even if it's a little false break like we saw at the lows at 108 here, um, you would want to watch out for it rolling over again. Um, there's no trend here basically at the moment. So until we see a concrete weekly close above 114, um, I don't have any real confidence in this in this up move uh, maintaining itself. <laughs> On a daily basis, the trend certainly is still higher, but we can see that we've had a, a tweezer top pattern put in at the tail end of last week. If I just clear off the uh, do, 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 options, if I just remove the period separators here, yeah, we can see that we're, we're probing back into that tweezer top. So if we get a break above what is a bearish pattern basically here, um, then that would actually be a bullish sign and suggest to me that we can at least get another 80 pips or so up to that 114 mark. Switching gears to equities. Mm. So we had our eye on that one seven three hundred mark obviously, um, but uh, the market chopped and changed around there, tried to break lower, but it just didn't happen. And we had this bullish engulfing candlestick here. Um, well, a day that engulfed the previous day um, wasn't at the end of a trend, but nonetheless um, followed a, um, a, an attempt to break lower there, closed higher. Another attempt to break lower here, closed higher. So bullish signs within the market. And uh, once we had that last one, um, there was no turning back over the next few days. We went and tested that 7300 again, the final time, closed right up at the highs, and we pushed solidly higher the last two days. So it does look as though probably the main pivot to watch out for again is the 7450 mark, um, where 7300 was the significant part of the range on the downside, 7450 could call it on the top side. Obviously above there, we start looking at these um, previous highs around the 7550 mark. Um, firstly, I would still describe it a range, but I think it's, it's quite a good sign um, that we really basically held 7200. I thought we could get down to the 7100 mark, but again, even as I was saying that on a previous um, uh, on a previous webinar, um, I was very much hedging myself, saying you can't underestimate these equity markets. It's still overall a bull market in stocks. Um, so if, if you are looking for short positions, um, you've got an overall bull market working against you, and this has been a prime example right here. <laughs> Um, DAX looking very strong at the moment, looking like we're pretty good for a um, for a record high this week. We're just probing that 12,900. Looks like pretty good odds we can get above 13,000 this week, judging by this um, strong weekly trend. We had that swing low point there. We tried to dip below. We couldn't do it. We've got the bullish engulfing week, uh, and then we haven't looked back since. We've been trending higher each week. So risk of a double top, obviously. Um, around 13,000 marks, so we do have to watch out for any big bearish reversal patterns up here, but the trend's still very much our friend, I think, moving higher at the moment. If we jump down to the, uh, the daily chart, you can see um, finished last week very strongly, breaking above what had been a bit of resistance from this previous peak back in July. You can see we're consolidating there, but we've got the big breakout, and the last two days have been, been very solid. Um, you can imagine it might get a little bit more touchy around as we get into that 1200, 12900 mark, um, but then with the trend this strong, um, if it is going, to, if it is going to break above here in one go, you're not going to get too big a pullbacks. But given it's been such a sharp move, there's a good chance we get. Uh, you know, if we'd been steadily moving higher, I'd feel better that we're going to get the breakout. But this sudden sharp move. Um, the market could be looking a bit exhausted. Just look at the RSI down here on the daily basis. Pretty overbought at um, plus 75 at one point. So I wouldn't be surprised to see us dip back below 70 on the RSI um, to get out of that overbought condition before we then make another run at breaking through 12,900. 
Um, so Wall Street looking at new record highs as we speak. Uh, the big level ahead of us is the 22,500. Um, it's looking like a reasonable uh, bet that we can take that and take out that. Um, we'll have to see what the reaction is within U.S. markets um, to uh, the expectation about uh, Donald Trump's speech on infrastructure, to the shooting in Las Vegas, um, and uh, to the other global factors at hand. The Catalonia referendum you could count as one, but that's been largely discounted in Europe. Technically, we're you know we're in a solid uptrend at this point. We w this, the, an example of the strength of the trend is we had the previous record high here from August, and uh, we broke above it, came back for a retest, but didn't even get to it. Um, we were sort of 20 odd points shy of the uh, 50 odd points even shy of that previous peak, and then rallied on again up to new highs. So it's looking fairly solid um, on a daily basis, and uh, and even more so on a weekly basis. There. It's uh, very much a bull market, so you're very early days if you're calling the top just yet, um, even if it is October. Uh, so Brent crude, let me get out to the weekly chart here. Um, so a big bearish reversing looking pattern here on the weekly chart as we ran in to the previous peak from um, from from the start of the year, from from January. So. Um, not, the market not looking that confident at a, a breakout at the moment. Um, I still think that probably we can hold the 55 mark, and if we can, I think we can push back into this uh, this pin bar pattern here. But you know, when you see a strong multi-month resistance, and then you see a push into the resistance and a close near the lows, um, it's a sign of sellers coming into the market. It's a sign of weakness. And I think that's why we're getting the follow through today. Um, quite a big drop um, in, in Brent here. And we're, um, you know, 55 really is the next line in the sand. That's the old peak. If I drop down to the daily chart, you can see a bit better. Um, that's that peak here for May that, um, that we took a little while to, to get through. You, we couldn't do it on first attempt. We came all the way down to the lows. Finally did it recently. Um, but we may need to come back right down to it again to that 55 mark or thereabouts. So watch, you know, watch 55, but we are approaching the 20-day moving average. It's kind of the area where we broke out. Um, you know, you could say that we are putting a couple of highs on the 13th through the 15th through the 18th even. Then we've got that little breakout and the big move higher. We're right back to that now. So somewhere within this, this former trading range could end up finding support. Because again, I think this is... Um, this is a rising market, but we've hit just a big multi-month resistance, so it's understandable that we're getting a pullback from there. Um, looking at RSI, we're still above that 50 mark, so you can still feel good about um, uh, buying into a rising market from, from an RSI perspective. Um, if we do get through, then obviously 60 is the big <coughs> round number to consider. Uh, but to my mind, since we've broken through this declining trend line that I've mentioned before, um, potentially the upside's quite quite decent here. And if we can clear the old highs here and we can clear 60, uh, then we're really opening the door to pushing up to um, 66, 67, 68, the highs that we were basically seeing uh, back in 2015. So quite a pivotal moment here for all markets. Looking pretty soft at the moment, but um, we're really basically, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a is this long-term trend line break versus this this resistance at the moment, and currently that resistance is winning. Um, gold also looking pretty soft. I mean, why are commodities all falling in unison? Well, it's um, strength in the dollar really is the, probably the main contributing factor. Um, and so while the dollar's on this bullish run, it's going to be difficult for commodities to push higher. So we've take, we've jumped back through the 1300 mark, which is what was what we broke through before. But I did say when we when we did that, it has been a very choppy rising market. So um, not that um, unbelievable to have seen us drop through the 1300 mark. That uh, didn't didn't quite hold a support. That's not the nature of gold for these levels to hold that perfectly. We get you get big swings in the gold market essentially. Um, what we could be looking at next uh, as a potential area of support is the 50% pullback. Um, so we, we dropped through the 50 of this shorter term move, 
So then we have to look out to uh, the bigger move here where you find the 50% pullback pretty much in line with the 50-week um, moving average around the 12.45 mark. Obviously, that's a big dip from here. Um, but you can see that the alignment in the market is pretty much to the downside here. We've taken out last week's low. We're making lower highs, lower lows. You know, it's a falling market on the daily trend, and the moving averages are rolling over to reflect that weakness in the price. So it's not looking like a fantastic time uh, to buy, not looking like any real serious um, uh, chance of, of reversing since we broke through that 1300 mark. So overall, we're, we're okay well above this 12, 1208 low down here, um, just based on the kind of previous weekly swing, you could use that. You could arguably use this as a maybe more conservative measure of where the uptrend uh, needs to hold. So that's more like the 1250 mark. <coughs> um, if we use this crosshairs here, you see it's around 12, 1250 and change, where we saw that previous low. Um, above there, you know, look maybe look for some deep value uh, to come back into the market. We obviously have NFP at the end of the week. Um, gold's always a big move on NFP. Maybe it sends us down to the lows. Um, or uh, you know, if we if we beat those pretty measly expectations, or maybe it's the it's the turnaround point where people start to lose faith in the in the the U.S. economy and the Fed's ability to to raise rates more. So unless there are any any specific questions, uh, I'm going to call it a day at that point. Uh, thank you very much for attending, everyone. Uh, it's Jasper signing out.